pleasant good afternoon everyone. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Medyo relax talaga ngayon. It's kind of dim. Naintindihan ko po yan. I understand it's kind of cool right now. Hotel-ish a while ago. So hopefully you're not sleeping. Pakikalapit naman yung katabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, don't sleep yet. Okay, mamaya pa ang sleeping time, mga 9 p.m. But again, uh, my name is Daniel. I'm one of the pastors here in the 5 p.m. Uh, service. And if this is your first time, maybe you're watching online. I think that is the camera, not this one, but this one. If you're watching online, you're here for the first time. We are so happy that you are here. Hopefully, this will not be the first and last time that we will see you. Uh, today is actually the second day of our series. We titled it Redefine. And uh, this is actually a 16-week part series. Grabe, Pasko na. Ang tapos nito, okay? Noche buena na. But really, I'm just, just kidding. Actually, uh, we will end around <clears throat> before November, the last week, uh, last, uh, week of October. But this is really, really long because we just felt like, you know, really, uh, we, we want to dig deep. In, in the scripture right now. We're, we're going through the three chapters of Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And here's the thing. Uh, we're going to talk about the Sermon of the Mount. This is Jesus' uh, longest recorded sermon. But hopefully, this is what we also want you to get as we go through the 16 weeks of uh, Redefined series. We want you to hopefully to get back to the scripture, be inspired, go back to the word and read it. Tell your neighbor, read the Bible. <clears throat> read the Bible. If you don't have a Bible, buy a Bible, okay? As long as that Bible is something that you can understand, something that, uh, you know, you can really handle maybe, uh, maybe you can bring wherever, in a coffee shop or whatnot. But really, hopefully, this 16 weeks, we will not just be able to preach to you the message, but hopefully we will be able to inspire you to read and dig deep in the Scripture uh, of the Word of God. And of course, this, um, this, this series is all about the Sermon of the Mount. This is Jesus preaching to the disciples then and also to the crowd. And the reason why we titled it Redefine is because when Jesus entered in this part of the history, he is actually redefining the hearts and the minds of the listeners, the disciples and the crowds, about what the kingdom of God is like. When Jesus entered in the ministry, he was around about around 29, 30 years old or 31 years old, depending on um, you know, what theology you're, you're reading right now. Um, you know, when Jesus entered into the ministry, he preached something like this. Repent and be baptized for the kingdom of God is here. Big time, right? That's one of the strongest message of Jesus. Repent, be baptized for the kingdom of God is here. Or for the kingdom of God is near. And I believe it's not just speaking to uh, the disciples then, to the crowds then. Even today, I hope that when we hear the scripture, we will uh, also be redefined in terms of our minds and how our hearts, the way we look at the kingdom of God. Because Jesus would also want this to happen to us. That we will have this kingdom thinking that results into kingdom living. Hopefully, our minds will be changed that so that we will live according to the kingdom of God. So, now you're hearing the word, the kingdom of God. I hope you're getting this, that this message, this whole series is basically or primarily uh, geared towards the believers or the Christians. Sino ba dito? You love Jesus. You know you're a follower of Christ. You are a disciple of Christ. Who among you here? 25, 30, 36, 40. Okay, more. Okay, yung iba, okay. That's fine, okay? So, we are around maybe 500, 600, 700 here. Uh, you know, but hopefully, uh, this, this messages that we will hear for the next 16 weeks, actually the 15, uh, 15 weeks, uh, will really pierce into our, heart, into our hearts. But if you are not yet there in that decision making, maybe some of you, you're thinking, maybe this is your first time, you're, you're watching online, you're thinking about surrendering your life, to Jesus, maybe you're not there yet. My prayer is this, that you will have your personal encounter with God. Hopefully, someone will lead you into it. Hopefully, a situation, not really a bad one, but really just a situation, you know what I'm saying? A situation will, will come to you and you will realize that you would need God. And maybe for some of you, um, you might feel that, well, I'm not that close to God right now. You feel like maybe you're far away from God because of some issues in life. 
I pray that as you hear the scripture, the messages that you will hear for this series, God will touch your heart, that God will minister to your heart because God would want to speak to you and God would want you to be back in that track that he wants you to be in. So <clears throat> kingdom thinking results into kingdom living. And here's somehow a brief definition of what the kingdom of God is. This is a very theological definition of the kingdom of God. It means this. It's actually a place or a status where God is king. Ang lalim, di ba? Yun na yun. That, that's it. That, 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 you get what I'm saying? Okay. Theologically speaking, the kingdom of God is this. It's a place or a status where God is king. Okay? Maybe that's in your office. Maybe that's in your family. Maybe that's in your campus. Maybe that's here in the church, hopefully. Okay? Or maybe that's in your heart. Just like, it's like Jesus is saying this, okay? Where God is king, click. Where God is king, we'll live there differently. If God is in charge, we will live differently. If God is in control, God is the Lord of our lives, amen. Who among you here, you declare that God is the Lord, Jesus is the Lord of your life? Konti na lang, lima na lang, okay? We will live differently. Yun yung, yun yung ini-impart ni Jesus do sa Sermon of the Mountain. I believe this is something as well that we need to hopefully hear and apply in our lives. So, uh, last week we talked about the Beatitudes. We talked about somehow uh, the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. Last week we talked about happiness. So, hopefully, um, you know, when we were hearing that, a definition of happiness. The world really has inculcated some things in our minds. That's why when Jesus talked about the Beatitudes, parang iba. You know, how can you be happy when you're poor in the spirit? How can you be happy when you're mourning? How can you be happy when you're persecuted? So, it, you know, for the remaining weeks that we will talk about this, we will always feel that there's something that goes against what Jesus is saying because Jesus is actually trying to say, the kingdom of God is different from the kingdom of this world. And I want you to understand, if you are a follower of Christ, you are part of the kingdom of God. And we learned last week that happiness is not rooted in temporary things, but it's rooted in the things of eternity, things, eternal things that comes from God. So hopefully, it's something that will always resonate in our lives. Today, we're going to talk about calling. Calling. Tell your neighbor, Calling. You know that because you are a follower, a disciple of Jesus, you live for God, and you are, you are, we are in the kingdom of God, God will also want to redefine your purpose and your calling. Tell your neighbor, you have a purpose. <clears throat> Maybe that's your question right now. God, what is my purpose? And for a typical Jewish person listening to Jesus that time, they have their own mindset. They have their own you know, you know, this is the kingdom of God. Yeah, I understand that. I know that because a, a Jewish person, pers, person, person, okay, na sobran sa English, you know, person, okay, would think that the kingdom of God is this. I just follow the Ten Commandments. That's good. I follow the Levitical law. I'm fine, okay. I go to the temple and sacrifice for my sins. I'm good, okay. And then I live a good life. I'll honor my parents, you know, I will love my wife and do everything. I'll raise up my kids very good and all of those things. Then, that's it. I'm living for the kingdom of God. But Jesus came in and he's trying to redefine. Jesus is saying, wait, there's more. Tell your neighbor, but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. If you order now, okay, ma. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, or Jesus, what Jesus is redefining is not the meaning of the kingdom of God, but the view and perspective of the kingdom of God. He's not, he did not come to change the definition of the kingdom of God, is this and that. No, he's not changing the definition. He's changing or redefining the view, the perspective, because they were they had a limited view of what the kingdom of God is. But Jesus is actually preaching to them and even to us right now that the kingdom of God is bigger and wider than we think it is. So let's open right now our Bibles in Matthew chapter 5. 
I'll be reading in verse, uh, I'll be reading verse 13 to 16. This is NIV. So again, as I always, uh, I, I told you two weeks ago, from this point on, I will not show you the verse, okay? I will not let you read the verse from there, but hopefully you will look down, okay? Okay. Please open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. If you have an electronic one, okay lang then, okay? Uh, electronic ones are accepted. But if you don't have a Bible, I hope you, that you will purchase one or you will not forget it again. If you really don't have it right now, please pretend, okay? Or makibasa ka, okay? Tell your neighbor, pwede ba makibasa? Okay, pwede naman, okay? Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. I'll be reading 13 to 16. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Good question. How can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. That's what we're seeing a while ago, right? A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Imagine that. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, verse 16, let your light shine before man, before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. you. You've spoken this word 2,000 years ago and up until now, we're still reading it. It's so amazing right now that we're preaching your preaching. We're hearing your preaching today. And I pray that, Lord, we will not just hear, but we will apply. And Lord, whatever, God, this, this falls in our, in, our, in our lives, I pray that, Lord, you will just tug our hearts, empower us through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, <clears throat> amen, amen. I would like to read the first line that Jesus said. He said there, you are the salt of the earth. And of course, he also mentioned, you are the light of the world. It's uh, interestingly, uh, well, it's so interesting that God or Jesus used common stuff to explain or redefine or define something that is so critical, like a calling of a believer, a calling of a follower. He could have said, you are the diamonds, you know, that's, uh, that's underground and you have to be picked up and all of those things. Or he, he could have said, you're, you're like the galaxies in the skies, diba? You're like the diamond in the sky. Parang kanta yun, ha, di ba? You're like, you're like this or you're like that. You're like a flower. Huwag naman flower, di ba? Parang, or you're like, he could have said it like that. But Jesus mentioned two very common, very familiar stuff in the ancient world. But seems like intentionally, Jesus used these two familiar words, familiar elements in their time. Because Jesus understood that when these two elements, the salt and light, is not on earth, would you agree that this world is a very difficult place to live? Imagine without salt. Life without salt. Oh, mamaya na, okay? Gutom na tayo, di ba? Paano na chichiria, all right? Imagine without salt. Imagine life without light. So difficult. But seems like Jesus is trying to point out something. And he started with this thought. You are the salt of the earth. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you're salty. Okay. I'm <coughs> sorry. <coughs> yung, yung term in, in, in the millennial you know, term. When you say you're salty, it means you're bad, you're bitter. <coughs> but of course, Jesus is not, was not thinking about that. Because in their context, there are two main functions of a salt then. I'll show you this picture. A salt is something that preserves and enhances. Oh, di ba? Para talagang sarap magluto. Di ba? Who among you here, you cook? Woo, okay. Anong part ng, ano yan, ng beef yan? Nah, just kidding. But, you know, Jesus is saying, you are the salt of the earth and two functions of the salt then. Number one, it preserves and number two, it enhances the taste or the flavor. I would like to focus right now on the word preserve because... Back then, there's no refrigeration, okay? Imagine that. 
Salt then is a very valuable thing. It's like a refrigerator in their time uh, because, uh, you know, whenever they buy uh, raw meat, the only way for them to keep that meat for the next few days, two, three, four, five days, is to rub it with salt, okay? And then to keep it, ibabalot nila yon, okay? And then balotize it, okay? Cover, wrap it, okay? Heat up mag-English, okay? Wrap it, okay? And then they'll keep it because there's rub salt, okay? And we all know, how you here, you're, I know you're into science, chemistry. You know, one of the characteristics of uh, salt is, according to, Nax, <laughs> talaga kala mo Natutunan ko na to a while ago. Nah, just kidding. But <clears throat> according to science, diba, what the salt does, the reason why they did that in, in ancient times, and even right now, uh, they're still doing it. The reason why they're doing that, because uh, a salt has a composition, okay, big word, composition, that delays the decomposition or somehow stops the bacteria that eats up or makes the raw meat decay. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, we all know that. The reason why you put salt then, because there's no refrigeration, there's no freezer, they don't know how to create ice at that point, so they put salt, making sure that that meat will stay for a few days, maybe. Four or five, maybe max two weeks. <clears throat> and Jesus is saying, you are the salt of the earth, which means this. The reason why you are right now there in the family and you're the only Christian in the family it's because God is telling you, you are the salt in that family. And because you are there, your family, your family, along the way, as you answered the call of God to become a salt in that family, they can and they will along the way experience life and not decay. Or in maybe in theological sense, not judgment from God. The reason why you're right now there in a call center, okay? It's so difficult. You know, I, at one point in my life, I worked in a call center. It, you're working in that environment. You're working in a government position. You're working in that workplace. So much corruption. So many stuff happening under the table, over the table, including the table. So imagine, okay? Everything is given, okay? Just give me all. I'll give it back. All of those you know, stuff that we always, you know, we always see in the news. The reason why you're there and God is saying you are the salt of the earth is because you are the one who will prevent judgment to come upon and to drop into that government area, government place, into that office, into that family. And the reason why Jesus has tagged us as the salt of the earth and the reason why Philippines is still where it is today. Imagine Philippines without Christianity. I don't know. I can't. I can't imagine it. But thank God we are called to somehow suppress, delay for the moment maybe. And maybe this is, this, this is some, I mean, this might be an application to you. Somehow, the way we can apply this is that you will speak the truth in love. Uh, if you're a parent, how long you hear you're a parent of, well, at least one child, okay? Kaya nga parent, okay? Nagtanong pa eh, no? Oh, you're a parent of two child, okay? Um, <clears throat> Jesus is telling you, or in this passage, that you are also the salt of that family. Which means this, hopefully, we will be responsible in preaching, teaching, sharing the word of God into the hearts of our young people, of your child, so that, so to speak, the sinful nature in each and every one, in each and every child that you have, do you know that a, a child in its very young stage, you can actually see that there is sinful nature coming out there. Nobody will tell your child to lie, but she or he will lie. Alam mo lang eh, you, you just know that there is a sinful nature inside. And us being a, a salt in that family prevents that to progress even more. Imagine that. You are the salt of your houses. You are the salt of that office. Imagine maybe you, you would see your boss, you know, boss, you know, you have a wife, but 
why are you flirting with the secretary? You have to do something there. It's either you pray or it's either you speak up. But God is calling you to be a salt on the earth. Pastor, hindi ba mahirap yon? It is. It is. Jesus never said that it will be easy. But He's telling us, you are, you are, you are the salt. And it also enhances life. It also enhances the flavor of the food. Tama ba? Uh, I have here <clears throat> one of my favorite fruit. <clears throat> okay, namalengke po ako nina. Okay, I went to SM Aura. Oh, hindi market market lang palata. Oh, mong you here? You like um, green mangoes? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Walang daya to. Okay, guys. Okay. Palulutang natin to. Nah, just kidding. Make this float. No. Uh, I like this uh, specifically when it's uh, uh, a bit sweet, but you know, sometimes it's also okay to eat a sour one like this one, okay? Yan, nagbalat na po siya. Okay. Whoopsie. Okay. Oh, 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 na. So, ito na po yung finished product, ma'am, sir. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. But who among you, you like to take a bite of this? Uh, Isa lang, okay. Okay, I'll just pick one. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> you know the taste, right? But it's sour, but I like it. But who among you here, you would appreciate this more. If you put what? Okay, yung iba bagoong. Ba't sinasabi ng bagoong? <laughs> Sige nga, i-preach nga natin to. You are the bagoong of the earth, okay? Come on now. Malansi, marang hindi. How can this be, okay? I'm a shrimp, okay? No, you're not. Okay, you are a salt. You are the salt of the earth. If you have a salt like this, this is a good one, okay? Wow, McCormick, iodized, you know, it's, uh, it came from uh, Maryland, USA. This is no baliches lang pala, sorry. And I put salt. No, just kidding. I just want to take time. Can I eat? I'll just take a break, okay? So good. So good. <laughs> mm. So good. How many here you want mangoes right now? <laughs> I just want to take that time because that's what salt does. It makes you thirsty, right? It makes you wanna. <sighs> If you can run in the stage, ah, 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 ah. that's what makes, that's what salt does. And Jesus is saying, that's the impact that you can have in this world. We are not just limited to the confines of this room. Stop thinking that, you know, we are Christians, I'm okay, I'm reading the Bible, I'm obeying it, you know, I attend here every single week, you know, I go to my victory group and all of those things, and then I stop. That's it. That's the kingdom of God for me. But Jesus is saying, wait, there's more. You are the salt of the earth. You cause preservation and enhances this world to become a better place. History would tell us that Christians were the people in history who started orphanages, who started hospitals, who started schools, because these believers in the past knows that everybody deserves to have a better place to live in. Everybody deserves, like Red Cross, Operation Blessing, the, the things that we do in Marawi, the things that we do, that the Christian does in Syria and other places of the world. They believe what Jesus said, that you are the salt of the earth. And we are not just, con you know, limited here in these chairs, hearing the word of God, and after that we'll go home and watch Netflix. You're not made for it. 
I'm the last, ano naman eh, I'm the last uh, preacher, so I'm not. You're supposed to be shaken out of the shaker and make an impact in the earth. You're not supposed to stay here. You're supposed to. Sorry, uh, I, you have to vacuum it, okay? All right. It's not planned, but I just felt, you know, I have to do it. God calls, calls you to cause change in this world. And here's the issue that Jesus presented. You are the salt of the But if salt loses its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? Jesus is putting attention right now. Do you know that we can make a decision not to become a salt, not to be a salt, as God would tell us? You know how? You know, science would say that the... You know, I tried to research it. Eh? That the salt can lose its saltiness because uh, of condensation, meaning there's water happening in the air and then somehow it passes through the salt, okay? And somehow dilute the sodium chloride. Oh, ah, you know that, okay? One more here, you love chemistry. NaCl can be diluted and be taken out of the crystal. The crystal is still there, but there is no NaCl anymore. That's the issue. And you know what? What Jesus is saying there, you know what? You can make a decision not to answer this call and you just mix up. You know, you know it's happening in the office. There's a lot of uh, bad stuff happening in the office and you do this. I'm not looking. I'm not seeing something. And I'm not going to say something. I'm not hearing anything. And with that, along the way, you'll find yourself diluted. And Jesus is saying, it's no longer good for anything. It's a waste. The most wasteful thing that the Christian will do is just stand by there and do nothing. Sayang. Sayang yung salvation. It's a waste. The salvation, the cross that God has given each and every one. But Jesus is saying, be the salt. You don't have to be Come one, you are the salt of the earth. There's no impact when there is no contact. We have to, we have to go out of this confines of this room. We have to make an impact around the world. I'll skip this slide because, you know, if you want to remember salt, it just means speak and act with love and truth. It's kind of mushy. It's kind of corny, but you know, if you want to remember it, how to be a salt in the office, just speak and act with love and truth. How to be a salt in the, at, at your home, just speak and act with love and truth. In your campus, speak and act. It's not just about speaking, it's doing something with love and truth. Jesus also mentioned, you are the light of the world. You are not just a salt. You shine you shine. Tell your neighbor, you shine. Not, not the shiny, you know, you know you're, am I oily? No, you just, you're the light of the world, okay? <clears throat> when Jesus was talking about that, he's not saying that you are the source of the light because Jesus said in J John that he is, or I am the light of the world. So what does he mean when he said you are the light of the world? You know, it's like, you know, in the darkest night, the, the source of light that we have is the moon, right? And what the moon does is it reflects the source of the light, which is the sun. So the main source of light is the sun, but the moon in the most darkest night shines the brightest because it reflects the source of light. And Jesus is saying, as I have reflected and have given you my love, my mercy, my grace, hope, truth, Faith, every good thing that I have given you, reflect it because you are the light of this world. We are supposed to reflect what Jesus has done for you. Reflect the light of love, Re reflect it. And ito lang yan. Sometimes, whenever we try to reflect truth to the lives of other people, sometimes they will disdain and say, Ah, what's that? What's that? What's that? Do not feel rejected because first and foremost, what they're rejecting is not just you, but initially the source of your light, which is Christ. I want you to close your eyes. We're not done yet. I want you to close your eyes. 
Okay. Hindi po ako mawala. Okay, I want you to close your eyes. Okay. And at the count of three, please open it. Okay. One, two, three. Open your eyes. It's night time, okay? This is the picture of the world. It's dark. No direction. Majority of the people that you know outside this, this church lives in this kind of environment. You can't see the hurt, but there is hurt. You can't see the depression, but you can see. But there is depression. But what do you see in your periphery? Meron ba kayong nakikitang ilaw? You see exit, right? You know, your light shines the brightest. It the most in the darkest places of this world. And that's what light does to each and every one of you. Let's open the light, please. It gives you direction that that is the exit. It gives you sense of, wow, yeah, that is the way to go for life. And Jesus is saying, you are that light that will guide maybe your friends, your parents, your, your loved ones, the people that you're working with to eliminate, illuminate and expose the truth of God in their lives. That's what light does for you and for me. It says there, a city, on a, a, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Jesus is another, you know, he's, he's putting another tension right now. Do you know that you can actually not do this? You have the option. You can actually hide. You can hide because of shame. You're saying, you know, God, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to share the truth, to be a light for my office, to tell the gospel because, you know, what about my reputation? And when we are hiding behind the curtains of shame, we're actually saying, God, my reputation is more important than you. But Jesus is saying, a, you know, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You cannot, you should not hide behind the curtains of your shame. And you should not hide behind the curtains of your, you know, this is my personality, I'm a strong guy, I'm a shy type person. Jesus is saying, you cannot hide. The world should see you. He mentioned this. Are we reflecting Christ in the world? Are we reflecting? When your office mates, when your children, when your spouse see you, when you get back home, what do they see? Do they see really Christ in you? Or when, they, when, you, when you go to your office, you go to your campus, you go to your home, people are afraid or people are saying, Oh, and si ano, yan na, okay, woo, okay. You're just, you know, part of the crowd. But they don't respect you for what you believe. Are we reflecting Christ in the world? Lastly, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they, tell your neighbor, they, who's those... Sino mga day? Who's that day? These are the people who doesn't know Christ yet. That's your family member maybe. That's your office mate. Somebody that you're trying to reach out and pray for. That they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. Ultimately, what we want this world to see is this. That they will taste and see. That they will taste and see God's glory through our lives, in our lives. That when they see you, that when you scatter, when you go back to your work tomorrow, when you go back to your homes later, when you go to the mall, we make an impact. We make a difference. And we make this world a better place to live in. I just want to say this before we end the whole thing. Aren't you glad? 
Aren't you glad that somebody became the salt and the light for you? That's why we're all here. If you're a believer, your life has changed. Your life has been changed by the gospel. And you're experiencing a wonderful life, a meaningful life, a life that is full of adventure. You know, it's not always happy, but you know what? It's meaningful. And at least at that level, you're experiencing life and life to the full, as Jesus said in his scripture. And it happened because someone stood for you. Someone prayed for you. Someone took that risk. Sige, I would want to be the salt in this area. And we responded. Someone took the time to preach the gospel to us. But ultimately, I would like to say this. Jesus exemplified becoming a salt and a light for us. That He gave His life for you and for me. Entered into the history of mankind. Actually, He doesn't have to. It's just that He loves us so much that He doesn't want to go further in eternity without us. That's His love. That's His glory. Shown for each and every one of us. I just want to pray for you right now. Let's all bow down our heads. Lord Jesus, it's a challenge for us. We know our context. We know what will happen when we go back there. We know the situation. But Lord, I pray that you will just give us that grace in your spirit, God, to enable us to become salt, to speak and act with love and truth to become a light as a source of direction, illumination, and exposes the truth in a person's life. God, I thank you. God, this is more than anything else, God. The reason why we're here is because of who you are, because of your love, because you became that salt in our lives, and you became, and you were that light, God, that has shown us the way. That's why we are alive and experiencing life to the full. And I pray, God, Lord, for some of them right now, they're asking, God, God, can you just shed light into this dark part of my life? I pray that, Lord, you will answer that prayer. Today, some of you, you're asking, God, can you, can you just put flavor once again into this dry part of my life? The Lord is saying, I'm going to answer that prayer. If you feel like you have been dry for quite some time, God is saying, I will make you fresh once again. Maybe because of some things in your life, bitterness, uh, offense, unforgiveness, I believe God would want you to surrender that right now. If that is you, you're saying, God, I would want to surrender some things that has been hindering me from experiencing you. With all eyes closed, heads bowed down. I just want to pray for you. If that is you, please raise your hand. You're saying, enough of this bitterness, enough of this unforgiveness, enough of this habitual sin, enough of this things that hinders me enough of the that things in the past that has been haunting me Lord Jesus thank you for that hands raised I pray that you will cut what the enemy has placed God in their lives God right now in Jesus name we pray that you will break it break it right now and that your light will shine and that your truth will be spoken with salt that enhances its flavor. God, thank you for the release. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for what you are about to do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen, Amen, Amen.